confess tomorrow because he lives. I confess tomorrow because he lives. I confess tomorrow. My name is Pastor Faye Whetstone from Victory Christian Fellowship in Newcastle, Delaware. United States of America. My name is Renuka Roberts. I'm Trinidadian by birth, but I live in New York City. This is Doris Hokett, a missionary in Africa, almost 53 years now. Hello everyone, my name is Ibukolua Oni and I connect to the Combined Global Super Service. Woo! <laughs> Son of God. Hi, our names are Donald and Jemima Ukraine, okay. Senior Pastors, House of Jubilee Global, Makodi, Nigeria. This is Reverend Elizabeth Hemmings. Hello, my name is Dr. Blessing Ekundayo from New Zealand. Hello, my name is Anne and I connect with the Combined Global Super Service. I've been alive because it leaves. I confess tomorrow because it leaves. Hello everybody, my name is Abanda Omachi and I connect to the Combined Global Super Service. Which also has a student segment. Woo! Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Combined Global Super Service. I'm Gabriella Daly in Abuja, Nigeria. I always watch the services and they really bless me. So don't miss it. Welcome to the Combined Global Super Service. We all wanna make it from the bottom to the top. Some still stuff, cut the bottom with a pop, but the cock won't stop. Tomorrow going knock, so we answer the door like tomorrow going knock. So back to the future, just can't face it. Try so hard, but we just can't make it. Broken spaceship, still wanna launch pay living in the past. Hello, my name is Ruth from Canada. Hello, hello. I'm Isaiah Daily here in Abuja, Nigeria, and I consistently connect to the combined global super service. And I'll tell you what. It's always a super Hello everybody, it's wonderful to be here today, the day that the Lord has made. I rejoice and I am very, very glad in it. Hallelujah. Well, we have Pastor Michelle Elupo in the studio and I'm going to ask her to please come and open us with the opening prayers. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for this beautiful day that you have made. Thank you because we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for today's service. Thank you for everyone that is connected. Lord, we ask that our hearts will be ready even to receive that that you have set for us today in the name of Jesus. We ask, oh God, that at the end of today, your name and your name alone will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much, Dr. Ayoto. Thank you so much. Glory be to God. Well, I'm excited about today. This is part.
Palm Sunday and what's the significance of Palm Sunday? What does it mean to us? Um, I have Joshua in the studio and I'd like him to just come and give me an idea of what he thinks Palm Sunday is. Go on, Palm Sunday. Uh, Three guesses. Any guess, any guess, any guess. I think Palm Sunday is when Jesus rode in on a, on a, donkey, a yeah. donkey and um, the people there were waving palm, palm leaves at him. You are absolutely right. And that was just a week into, actually it was a few days, not a week, you know. A few days before his crucifixion, a few days before he was hung on the cross, a few days before he was brought before Pilate. And he is right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Esther, would you come and elaborate? Tell me anything special you know about Palm Sunday. And I'd like all of you in the comments tell us about Palm Sunday. What is the significance? What lessons can we learn from Palm Sunday? Palm Sunday is when Jesus rode on a donkey and people were waving palm leaves at him because he was seen as royalty and the king and he went there to go and preach the gospel of God Fantastic, what were the people saying when they were waving palm fronts? Messiah Hosanna, Hosanna Blessed is he who comes in the name of of the lord thank you so much esther that was wonderful i really appreciate it well uh, lagos center is saying good evening mom dad everyone connected we're glad to be here at the lagos center thank you so much for taking charge in the absence of uh pastor tunde this is zoe from atlanta usa good evening everyone happy palm sunday i'm so glad you are all able to join us in this glorious service great to see you pastor femi adelui is connected great to see you connected as well pastor martha is also connected it's great to see you um christy ame is connected great to see you christy what a joy and a privilege to have you with us Pastor Francis and the New Nyanya Center. We can see you, New Nyanya. God bless you. Love you so much. And um, I can also see Pastor Michelle Elupo, who is getting ready to jumpstart our children's church here in Coventry. And our one and only Dr. Mo is here as well. Great to see you connected. Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Palm Sunday is Jesus' is also called the triumphant entry into Jerusalem because when Jesus was coming, um, he was riding on a donkey, the foal of an ass, and people came and they took off their garment, they laid it on the floor, received him as royalty, not just any kind of royalty, but royalty of the King of Kings. They took him as the Messiah, and as the Messiah, they laid their garments on the floor, to receive him hallelujah you are very welcome you're very welcome wonderful to have you with us today glory be to god so yeah that's the significance of palm sunday hallelujah Amen. wow we have emmanuel isaac eluma who is connected can i ask everyone who is connected could you tell us where you're connected from so we know where you are and i'll be able to mention that xyz is connected from wherever it is you are and he says emmanuel says this is his first time of connecting wow. wonderful emmanuel please keep the comments rolling at any point in time and also if you have any prayer needs or any testimony you would like to share type it in your comments and post it up and it will go online great to have you remember that this service is meant to be fully integrated fully interactive and we can connect with one another hallelujah now please don't just connect but help others 
to connect to. We're having a wonderful and amazing time here in the studio, and we're having people joining us from all around the world. Glory be to God. Quite a few more comments. If you are connected online, please diminish your volume <laughs> to zero. Our one and only Pastor Rash, Rashida Collins is connected from Lagos. Hallelujah. Pastor Femi Adeluye is connected from Abuja. And Dr. Ayoto is here with us in the studio in Coventry. Glory be to God. Wow. It's wonderful. 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 Dr. Moyo says Palm Sunday commemorates Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. It's significant in Christianity as it symbolizes Jesus' role as the Messiah. Hallelujah. The palm branches symbolize victory and honor. Wow. I love that. Hallelujah. This is amazing. Um, sweetheart, while you were gone, oh, wow, we have Brother Yusuf Palm Elder all the way from Jos in Nigeria. Glory be to God. And Zoe is connected from Atlanta, Georgia, USA. Hallelujah. Well, keep, keep the notifications coming. It's just excited to have you all. Zoe says, yep. U.S. Georgia Alpharetta. <laughs> That's Atlanta suburb called Alpharetta. I, I don't think we remember to switch on the heaters. Thank you. <laughs> but she's taking off her jacket, which means she's hot. It's warm now, yeah. And also, sweetheart, and everybody who is connected online, I think we need an extra computer. You guys online will have an amazing time, but we in the studio need to be able to monitor what's going on online, so we need an extra computer that's there, day in, day out, always there. It's working, but it's connected on that. The same on both monitors. So we need an extra computer that will stream to that TV alone. So we can also see what's going on online. Yeah, because our wonderful guest doesn't realize what it looks like. So why don't you help her connect? Yeah, connect online so that... Yeah, so you can just click on the YouTube link and you'll be on. And that's assuming you've got the data. Okay, Emmanuel says he is connecting from the central business district, central area in Abuja. Emmanuel, so great to have you. What a joy. What a joy. What a joy. Hallelujah. So everybody who hasn't shared, please share. And we are going to have an amazing time in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It is our custom to always begin with a word of prayer. And so we're going to start this. No, we, we've prayed, but we haven't done the prayer for the nations. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves up and pray, turning from their wicked ways, says, I will hear from heaven and I will heal the land. It means God expects us to invite him into the affairs of our nations. Wherever you are, that you are domiciled, God is counting on you. God is waiting on you, and he wants you to lift that place. So let's pray right now for Ghana. Let's pray right now for Nigeria. Let's pray right now for Atlanta. Let's pray for each of the places where we are domiciled. Are we ready to pray? Hallelujah. Let's pray. over the nations. Our nations are in the hands of the Lord God Almighty, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of all flesh. His will shall be done in nations. His counsel shall stand. His kingdom must come. Our nations are blessed. The mercies and grace of heaven are upon our nations. The favor of God Almighty is upon our nations. Therefore, we shall prosper and be great. There is peace across our borders. In our nations, there shall be no war. Every uprising is doomed to fail. The enemy of nations shall scatter and fall. The hand of God Almighty holds our nations together. The righteousness of God shall envelope our nations. 
the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God, shall cleanse our nations. All unrighteousness, ungodliness, violence, and corruption are exposed and judged. Righteousness shall exalt our nations. Our governments are blessed with wisdom from heaven, compassion for the people, clarity of direction and purpose. They shall lead and not rule. They shall walk in the fear of God and do what is right in our nations and for all people, knowing they shall give an account of their stewardship to God the judge of all. Our leaders are blessed with a sound health, a sound mind, and abundance of wisdom. They are delivered from every satanic and demonic influence, free from the counsel of the ungodly. They shall neither stand in the way of the sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Therefore, they prosper in whatever they do. Our governing executives are upright, dutiful, and productive, meeting the felt needs of our nations, building her to greatness and prominence. They are protected from every attack of the evil one by the mercies of God. Our lawmakers are wise and purposeful, working to better the lot of the people, building towards a greater tomorrow, and God shows them mercy with their households. Our judges are forthright and fearless, courageously dispensing justice to the oppressed, preserving the rights of every person, walking in the fear of God, who shall judge every man for all his deeds. Our homes are stable, happy, and prosperous all across our nations. The noise of the bride and bridegroom is multiplying daily across our land, and precious babies are being born that will make our nations better. Our businesses are blooming. The economy of our lands are prosperous. Our nations enjoy the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth. Every faithful business endeavor is blessed by the God of heaven. They shall increase and multiply. Our youth are strong and virile, walking in honor and dignity, learning to be excellent, marching into greatness. They meet with success and divine blessing in all their ways. Our schools and educational institutions will produce new generations that will be better than the current. They will promote the values and principles of the kingdom of God. The word of the Lord will have free course and prevail in our educational systems. The gospel of Jesus Christ has triumphed in our nations, bringing hope to the hopeless, light to those who sit in darkness. The spirit of grace has poured massively all over earth. God's glory is upon our lambs. The ministers of God are clothed with righteousness, proclaiming the truth with courage and integrity, with signs and wonders following. We are fulfilling prophecies, filling the whole earth with the word of the Lord. The press in our nations are vibrant, truthful, and purposeful, providing leadership and good counsel for the nations of the world, exposing corruption and upholding integrity. Our future is so bright. Our hope is secure. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our God and his Christ. The blessing of God is upon our nations. Hear our declaration, O God, and let it be according to our faith. God bless the nations. Glory be to God in the highest. Woo! I am excited. Now, we don't want to cheat those of us who are in the studio, so we've put it on the line. So, if you keep seeing duplications of me behind me, that's just what we have to cope with today. That's, that's just the way it is, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, this is that time. Let's go and see what the people online are saying. Oh, we have Sister Yewande Bakare is connected hallelujah 
and she says good evening that the mom and the entire OGSS family connecting live from the capital city Abuja and Ayodeji Oluwa Shogo Oni is connected good evening everybody we have Nji Deka Ugo also from the city of Abuja is connected we have sister Abike is connected great to see you Amy Rita is connected from Lagos Nigeria, great to see you. Great to have you, the one and only Obidia one of all the assemblies in the world. Reverend Mrs. Adated you, Bob Alonge is here with me in the studio, but she's also connected and she says hello to Emmanuel. You should say hello to me as well. Am I jealous? No, I'm not. Hello, Emmanuel, as well. Great to see you. Uh, it says, please, can we get your email address or Facebook handle to send you a newcomer's gift? So, Emmanuel, just put it in the. I, I would recommend it's your um, uh, what do you call it? Email address so that you are not bombarded by any strangers. We don't want to put you out there in trouble. All right. So, Jahifet family says, Happy Sunday. It's indeed the season, a defining season in Christianity. Yep, yep, yep. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. And Pastor Tony Idemudia is also connected. You preached the house down this morning. Thank you, Pastor Tony. What a blessing you are in the Capitol Assembly. Great to have you. And uh, woo, this is Mommy Ojomo all the way from Benin City, Nigeria. God's own capital. Hallelujah. Great to be. Yeah, how she says happy palm sunday everyone happy palm sunday to you and to daddy as well god bless you great to have you all please keep the comments coming this is that time when we get to hear from our children because it's time for our children's segment are we ready yup 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 here we go story to tell you. One time, Jesus had a problem. Hmm, Jesus, a problem? Yes, he had a problem. He was preaching, preaching to lots of people, but they were hungry. Hmm, have we ever listened to a message while being hungry? What would they be thinking about? <laughs> food. They needed to eat food. But then, he had been there for three days, and there was no food anywhere. So the disciples came to meet Jesus. The people are hungry. Jesus said, get them something to eat. Huh? Something to eat? 5,000 men and lots more of children and women. Where are we going to get food for them? Even with 200 denarii of bread, <laughs> it won't be enough. <laughs> but Jesus said, what do you have? Hmm, guess what? There was a little boy that had his lunch. <laughs> he had his lunch. And what was that lunch? You guessed right. Five loaves of bread and two fish. So they brought the boy to Jesus. I'm sure the boy was like, Oh, Jesus, take my lunch. Whatever you want to do with it. But the disciples said, What are these among so many? Meaning, how are we supposed to feed all those people with just five loaves of bread and two, two fish? You like my fish? Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, two fish. How? But Jesus said, bring it to me. So they brought the bread and the fish to Jesus. Jesus lifted it up to God and gave thanks. It was so small, but he gave thanks to God for it. He gave thanks to God for it. He blessed the bread and the fish. Yes, after he did that. Okay, before then he had told all the, all the multitude, told the disciples to tell them to sit down. So the people were seated, getting ready to eat. Mm -hmm. Then he gave thanks, blessed and broke the bread and shared it, shared. And the more he shared, 
the more he gave the disciples to share, the more he multiplied. And he fed the whole multitude. <gasps> Guess what? Afterwards, they had 12 baskets of bread and fish left over. Imagine that little boy going on with 12 baskets of bread and fish. Imagine. Hey, mama, I got lots of bread and fish. What? What's that? What happened to you? <laughs> But now, what's the lesson? That little boy, you don't consider his lunch too small. He gave it to Jesus. So what do you have, children? There's so many problems in the world that need solution. And you've got the solution on the inside of you. It could be a smile or helping someone with their homework or even helping out at home. Whatever it is, you know what you've got. Don't say, this is too small. It could even be money. It could be given to charity or giving an offering in church. Whatever it is, take it. Give it to God. Give thanks to God for it. And God is going to use it to bless the multitude. Guess what? It could even be, it could even be the gifts that God has put on the inside of you. It could be a gift like playing the keyboard, like singing, whatever it is. Don't consider it too small. Take it. Give it thanks to God for it. Give it to Jesus. I watch him to see the multitude. All right, I gotta go now. Trust you've been blessed. Goodbye. <laughs>
again. Some of you might need to stand. We are standing. I will stand there. Stand, stand to your feet, John. Okay, okay, okay. Now, if you remember about the motion, he said. Oh, God. 
Lord, we glorify you. We glorify you. We thank you. We thank you. We magnify you. We magnify you. Oh, le brama hasaya. Kalorona masaya. You give me security. And I'm under the canopy of God. Precious Father, the entrance of your word gives light. Breathe upon your word. Open our eyes to behold wonderful things from your word. Let there be light. We thank you, precious Lord, because we know and believe that you have done it. Because your credit is good with us. And we receive it, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated, everybody. Hallelujah. And welcome to this time in his presence. In the presence of the word. Hallelujah. The presence of the word. Let me do this. I want to get it out of the way because I keep feeling the Holy Spirit tugging my spirit to, to share this with someone. You know, guys, I want you to you to know that it's there are problems all all around the place. Um, the children's segment that we watched started with a very huge question you know, said Jesus had a problem. Wow! That jolted me because just to imagine, really my Lord, it's, it's like the first time I would say, did you know that Jesus was tempted? I could see people's faces looked at me. What kind of heresy yeah. is this? Yeah. That Jesus was yeah. tempted. And I, I followed it up by saying there's a difference between temptation and sin. Yes, if temptation is not curtailed and not responded to properly, it leads to sin. The Bible tells us that Jesus was tempted on every count as we were. I don't want to detail it. He was tempted to steal. He was tempted to lie. He was tempted to fornicate. Those who don't know what that word means, praise the Lord. But he never sinned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And sometimes we condemn people for their temptations. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. So when she said, 
Jesus had a problem. He shook me. I had to. Okay, he did. Yes, and you remember there was a whole multitude of people who came out in the wilderness. And he kept preaching till it was too late for them to go back safely to their villages. So they had to feed them. That was the problem. But thank God with every problem, there is an already ordained solution. He turned to his disciples and says, go and look for what we have. They wanted to tell him we have nothing, but just so that they wouldn't seem as if they are disobedient to his instruction, they went out among the people, found a small boy who had two fish and five loaves. They came back and said, that's all we could find. Jesus says, what you can find is enough. <coughs> Hallelujah. Now, this is what God showed me. And I know it's for somebody. And I, I want you to understand. I know how tough things are in Nigeria at the moment. I know how tough things are in the UK at the moment. Those in Nigeria don't even understand. That it's not just affecting those that are there. Students who left Nigeria when the Naira was better than it was. And came here by faith. Who had investments back home that was supposed to supply the rest of their schooling are now stuck here having gone through three quarters of their course almost finishing and now they can't pay their fees and people are, are, are losing their position they're being locked out of their universities some have been sent out of their houses and unable to pay their rents and so on and so forth I mean can you imagine having spent millions of naira and then having to go back to Nigeria empty handed without a degree, without having attained anything, without a legal status to be here. Or the other option is to stay here illegally and become a beggar in a foreign land. Living from hand to mouth and being used like a slave. So I know it's not easy and I'm saying that with all sincerity in my heart, I know where you are. I know how you feel. I've been there, done that. And I'm feeling the pressure as well. And if you are in that category, if you are among the people who are in a spot at the moment, I have come to tell you good news in the name of Jesus. I need you to see how the miracle of God was done. I need you to see it. Yes, Father. I will do that. Amen. Whew. I've removed what I was going to preach and let's flow with the Holy Ghost. Mm. Hallelujah. Now, has it ever occurred to you how did it, if you were there physically, when this miracle happened, how did it happen? I'm going to ask Joshua a question. I told you I'm going to be asking you questions, so pay me attention. All right? Uh, uh, how did it happen? When did the bread multiply? That's my question. When did the bread multiply? So, she says, welcome at 5.48. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, I, I, want us, I want to see. Remember, the Bible says, okay, I was about to take my phone as the bread, but I'm not going to break this iPhone. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, imagine the bread is in my hand. Okay. He's in the midst of a crisis situation. They've got to feed the people. He's preached too long, and the people, it wasn't only me, even my God did it. Hallelujah. <laughs> he took the bread, and the Bible says he lifted up the insufficient to God. He lifted up the one that was not enough to God. He lifted up the little they could find to God. Are you with me? He lifted up what was left to God. And gave thanks. How many of us will actually be thankful for what you know is not enough? You know, when you are in the midst of the crisis, that's when you become ungrateful. That's when the temptation comes for you to whine about what you don't have. Lord, we don't have enough. Lord, we don't have sufficiency. Lord, I don't have school fees. Lord, I don't have my rent. Lord, I don't 
have this contract. Lord, I don't have. And you can get so preoccupied with what you don't have that you fail to recognize what you have. It is that privilege of recognition that God can multiply. It is that attitude of gratitude that paves the way for a miracle. I know that it's tough. But in the midst of that toughness, what do you have? I have a house to live. I have a roof over my head. I have a wife who loves me. I have children who love me. I have children who don't even feel the pain of what is going on. Why? Because my God has chosen that they should have a father who carries it for them. Hallelujah. Now, that, that is a mighty reason to give thanks. I know a lot of people that don't have a mother to fall back upon, who don't have a father to fall back upon, who are having to do things unspeakable. At these kinds of times of difficulty. Uh, that I have children who can look unto me. Is great grace and a blessing. Hallelujah. The Bible says he took the insufficient, he lifted it to heaven, and he gave thanks. Some of us will take the insufficient and we lift it to heaven all the same. But we don't give thanks, we complain. For some people, that's their default setting. I heard a young lady say to me, well, that's the way I am. God takes me how I am. And, you know, I talk to him freely. I can just say it exactly as I'm feeling it. You know, the, the Bible says in the days of ignorance, God overlooks. Because you've done it before and it worked, doesn't mean you ought to keep doing that. The Bible says... At a time when you ought to be teachers. You are the one that still has the need for people to feed you with milk. Something is wrong. Hallelujah. Jesus didn't lift it up and say, Father, see you. I'm in front of the people you sent me to. After all I've done for you. I left heaven. I put aside my majesty. I laid it all down. And yet, yet, here I am with a problem. No, he took the insufficient and he mixed it with gratitude. Shanda bahapolo koparuna mahaya hai sekele naya. You know, at this point, I'm asking myself, whose faith and willingness was Jesus responding to? Was the Father responding to? Was it Jesus' own or the boy who gave the fish? it wasn't even Jesus' fish and loaves. Somebody surrendered it. Somebody. That was somebody's lunch. A young man, as young as Joshua was, he was so wrapped in attention he forgot to eat his lunch. It was lunch, not dinner. He was paying so much attention he was listening intently to the words of Jesus that he forgot to eat his dinner. And when Jesus would ask for it, Oh my goodness, may we have that same childlike faith. That all that God needs to do is ask. We went through all the crowd. There are men in that crowd. There are women in that crowd. There are older people in that crowd. Many of them may have had more, but it was just this young boy with a childlike faith. I have, I have it. I have it. I don't have enough to feed the multitude, but such as I have, I give unto thee. No complaint, he offered it up. You know, while the Bible says, and Jesus took the bread and lifted it up to heaven, Offering it unto God. Yes, sir. 
while the scripture says Jesus did it, it wasn't only Jesus that was offering it up. It was the little boy that was offering his little. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. It's a little boy that was offering his little. He lifted it up. And the Bible says he gave thanks. We are not told what words Jesus spoke. And please, every time you see these gaps in the scripture, fill it up in your imagination. I would imagine he would say, God, I know. My father, I know that this is not enough. However, with you, I know that nothing is impossible. And so, I am grateful and glad that I have that relationship and that act to you where I have the privilege of offering unto you who needeth nothing. I'm the one in need in this situation but yet I can offer unto you my father in heaven where there is no lack. I offer it. I offer it to you. I offer it to you. And okay, let's use our imagination again. The Bible says he had told his disciples to tell the people to sit down in groups and in companies. So they were well organized. That's an act of faith. Hello? Organized for what? They didn't need to sit in groups for him to preach. He had finished preaching. While they had nothing, he believed and acted as if they had everything. He's telling them to sit in groups ready to receive food that he knows not of. Where is it going to come from? Now, this is where I need you to use your imagination. He lifted it up to heaven. How many pieces of bread was there? Five. How many fish? Two. He brought it down. It's still two fish. It's still five pieces of bread. And then the Bible says he broke it. Now, the act of breaking of bread, cutting it in half, maybe not even in half. You know, sometimes if you have five kids and you have one loaf, like, you know, we were plenty in the house growing up in my childhood. And hey, even saying it is hard in my mouth. A, a, a loaf of bread as big as this, as big as this, was 20 kobo. In Nigeria in those days. Kobo is one hundredth of one naira. Kobo doesn't exist anymore because <laughs> it's not worth anything. 20k, that's what we used to call Kobo then. K. 20k bread. K not as in thousand no. K as in Kobo. And we would divide 20 Kobo bread when we were pretty young between five of us. So maybe Jesus broke one-fifth and then broke another one-fifth and then broke another one-fifth when did it multiply that's my question okay. is it when it got into the basket that one little piece of bread just became two or three or four let's use our imagination when do you think it multiplied when did it happen uh-huh uh huh. And they then in turn broke it and passed it on. Uh huh. So the disciples. Come, 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 come. These, these are our <laughs> theologians. Let, let's her give us her theory, her hypothesis. My, my hypothesis Jesus broke it and gave it, so maybe he broke it to 12 and gave the disciples a piece. Mm -hmm. One, they, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, tick. And then the disciples now went to the different groups and broke it and passed it. So maybe they took the one they had, broke it, gave it to the first two people, mm -hmm. one on the left, one on the right. Mm -hmm. The person on the left took, broke. broke. So when did it multiply? 
As they were breaking. As they were breaking. That is hypothesis one. Does somebody else want to suggest? My, my sister, you, you come and let me know what you think in your mind. Because I, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining I'm in the wilderness right there. You know, he lifted it up. By the time he brought it down, instead of it being one loaf, it must have been like a thousand loaves. Remember, then he took it. That's what the Bible says. He took it. So it was singular. So it couldn't have happened then. Okay? So my wife says it was as it was being broken. Please, my sister, come and add yours. That's your theory as well. As it was being broken. All right? Tell me what you think, Joshua. Come, 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 let me know. As it was being broken. As it was being broken. As it was being broken. Moyo, I'm coming to you next. Come. He said, what about the fish? <laughs> that when it was being broken it multiplied explain what would that look like that when they broke it it got bigger and exactly as they broke it so imagine you tore a piece of bread and then the bread grows back you tore another piece of bread and the bread that, that's the way I imagine it you know, yes, it was what. Thank you so much, Joshua. That's amazing. It was exactly what she said in my mind. That's what I imagined in my mind. That that as you broke the bread, we know uh, the uh, uh, um, Israeli bread used to be hard. You know, it's like French bread. Have you ever had French bread? That long thing the French eat. You break that. You don't cut it. <laughs> it actually sounds <laughs> when you break it. But the bread we are used to, British bread, Nigerian bread, you cut it, it's soft, you, you pull it apart. Eh? So let's imagine this is Jewish bread you break, all right? So imagine when Jesus broke, each part grew back. <coughs> then his disciples take that one piece in their hand and they break it, it grows back. They pass it to the person sitting at the edge of the road. He breaks it. It grows back. Ah, hey, which kind of bread? Forget, for, forgive me. What sort of bread is this? So they break. Now everybody wants to try it. Because the moment you start seeing me breaking, you want to break. Woo! Break. Woo! Break, whoa, break, 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 break. And they were breaking, it was multiplying, they were breaking, it was multiplying, they were breaking, it was multiplying. But there is a key here, there is a key you've got to see. I know it happened that way because the key is in the breaking. Why do I know? Because once upon a time, there was a woman with a problem. The Bible says she was down to her last cruise of oil and her last bit of flour. Hello? And when a prophet came into her house under the anointing, says, go cook it and give it to me. And as she brought it, as he broke it, the cruise of oil did not fail. Do you know what it means? She has a container full of oil when she poured it to give it to someone else it filled back up yeah. it says the crude of oil will not fill she poured it again ah. how there was just a little bit in there but my act of giving it out caused it to grow again and she poured and then there's another woman this one is a widow her husband died in debt. Now she owes. She comes to the prophet of God. The prophet of God says, go and vest, borrow vessels, not a few. She went and borrowed. What do you have in your oil? Just oil. He says, fill those vessels, sir. You don't understand. I've got just a little bit of oil remaining. These are 12 vessels I've gone to borrow. He says, fill it. Hallelujah. So she paused. As she keeps pouring, Keep pouring. it just kept flowing. Is there somebody hearing what I'm saying? There is something about keeping the pouring, keeping the breaking to keep it flowing. When Auntie Books was sharing, that's when the Lord put it in my heart that these are difficult times. 
these are times when people need a miracle and this is that kind of time when people withhold their hands listen it matters what you believe if you want conclude this is another method to get from you people are winding me up but the word is out there as they give you know i ask myself about those 10 lepers they came to jesus as lepers they had to shout from afar leper 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 so that nobody would touch them but jesus came to them and he said to them go show yourself to the priest and the bible says and it came to pass this is the work of faith and it came to pass as they went it was the act of doing what you will do if you are healed they weren't healed jesus says go show yourself to the priest that sentence every time anybody was healed of leprosy in israel the only way they could be absorbed back into society is if they go and show themselves to the priest and the priest would examine them and then certify them as healed so jesus was saying go do what you will do if you were healed if you had enough money what would you do i'd give i'd bless others if you had all of god's provision what would you do i'll be a blessing to others but isn't it so counterintuitive that every time that we face a problem every time that we are in lack every time my husband speaks to us roughly with an unkind tone we want to reciprocate and do the same thing we want to hold back our love and hold back our submission we want to keep it to ourselves but jesus says go show yourself to the priest keep pouring break that bread come on look at your neighbor say break that bread you saw that kindness you are nasty to me but i'll be loving to you wow I got this beautiful perfume yesterday when I felt I didn't deserve it at all. My wife just went out and bought this wonderful but I kept thanking her. I thanked her in the car, thanked her when we got home, you know, thanked her before we would lay to sleep, thanked her this morning. Thank you, honey. Thank you so much. He kept on it. Thank you for what? Thank you for what? Why? Because I didn't deserve it. But yet she reserved it. Yet she gave. Hallelujah. It's in the breaking. It's in the breaking that it grows. It's in the pouring that it fills. It's in the breaking that it grows. It's in the pouring that it fills. Don't stop. No matter what you do, this is not the time. It's not the time to withhold your kindness. It's not the time to withhold it's not even the time to cut it down it's not the time to commute it it's not the time to trim it down it's not the time this is the time to offer like that little boy who had all two pieces of fish and two loaves of bread offered it all that's all I have I give it to you this is that time that as he broke it grew it broke it grew she poured it filled she poured it filled she poured it filled and let me tell you something when everybody had eaten and were full what happened it stopped multiplying wow. when the need was met it stopped multiplying imagine the mechanics of it because they are breaking but what you've broken, you are trying to give it to somebody else. Says, no, I have enough. Stops. Let me tell you something about those Israelites. I don't think they stopped when they had enough. I think when they were full, and yet somebody was still passing them bread, they received it, put it in one pocket, received the next one, put it in the other pocket, received the next one, put it in until all the pockets were full. Yeah. It must have gotten to a point where they could not find a place to put it anymore yes yes joshua yeah the fish inclusive he broke the fish as he ties it the fish grows back ties it, the fish grows back imagine that and i'm sure somebody in each group will say fish 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 i have enough bread fish 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 <laughs> 
But you know, do you know what I'm trying to make us see? Huh? It's when you stop breaking that it stops growing. It's when you stop pouring that it stops flowing. It's God's pattern for the miraculous. It's God's, if your praise stops, the miracles stop. If your thanksgiving stops, the miracle stops. If your thanksgiving is replaced with words of bitterness, your miracles will cease. Hallelujah. Because it's reached its threshold. May your praise never reach its threshold in the name of Jesus. May your thanksgiving never reach its threshold in the name of Jesus. May your finances never run dry in the name of Jesus. May your grace never cease in the mighty name of Jesus. And it came to pass as they went they were healed. And it came to pass as they gave. They were provided. And it came to pass as they sowed in the midst of famine. The Lord gave the increase. Who am I preaching to today? Don't stop. Don't stop doing what you know is right to do. Don't stop doing what you know is spiritual to do. Don't stop doing what you know is God's way. Because right now at the threshold where you are, I was going to say this in, as part of my sermon, we are all at the beginning of something new. We are either at a threshold or we are at a precipice. You know the difference between the two? A threshold is the gateway to something miraculous, something positive. A precipice is at the corner or at the edge of disaster. When you say somebody is standing at a precipice, it means the next step it takes is going to end in disaster. When you say somebody is at a threshold, it means the next step he takes is going to be a miracle. Who decides if it is a threshold or a precipice? It's your breaking. It's your pouring. It's your giving. It's your sowing. It's your thanksgiving. It's your praise. It's your doing what you know you ought to do and not changing. Hallelujah. So the key is in our hands. Will we be that little boy? Will we be that young boy that Jesus says, give me what you have? Will we be that woman that the prophet will say, go and make for me to eat? Will we be that one that God says, prove me now if I will not open the windows of heaven? Listen, folks, I'm preaching to myself or as I'm preaching to you. Just yesterday, my wife will ask me, so how much are we giving to X, Y, Z? And I'm like, oh, no. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, oh God, we don't even have enough to pay our rent. We don't even have enough to do this. And we don't immediately, I'm thinking thoughts of poverty. <coughs> Reflex reaction. The responsibility of a husband. And then I hear a still small voice. Holy Ghost, no get gra Still small voice say, give it now. Just simple, simple keep, keep on pouring. Keep on pouring. It looks like you are stupid, but keep on pouring. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell them, keep on pouring. Who am I prophesying to today? Keep on pouring. pouring. Keep on pouring. Who did God leave that wonderful message I had prepared to come to speak to? I'm saying to you, keep on pouring. 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 Even in the midst of famine. Keep on giving. Glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. Pastor Femi says, threshold or, pre or precipice. Your willingness to keep praising. Your willingness to keep pouring. That's what determines it. You know, it, it's not one act of offering. It's not one act of tithe. It's not that I have praised God once in my life and nothing happened. <laughs> nothing will happen. Ouch. It's that you keep pouring. 
if Jesus has stopped breaking when he broke the first one and he became two and he grew back, if he had stopped at that point, would he have feed, fed the multitude? Would he? He couldn't have. It's in the act of keeping poor. And imagine if any one of them broke the chain. Maybe it's Bartholomew who decides this is for me. Ah, me, I'm hungry, Oga. And he decides not to give it to the next person. Not to give it to the group. Let's feed ourselves there. We can feed the people. If he had decided to do that, would they have fed the people? Keep on pouring. pouring. Keep on pouring. Yeah, they just said beginning of something new. God help us. Hallelujah. If your thanksgiving stops, so will your miracles. Hallelujah. Pastor Anne says, it's when you stop pouring that it stops flowing. May my praise and thanksgiving never reach its threshold in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Pastor Shegun says, so, so powerful. Thank you so much, Dad. Yep. And Amanda says, this is the time to offer up. Give upward. Give upward. Oh, there's a huge revelation in what she just said. Give upward. Give upward. In fact, give in every direction. Give upward. Give downward. Give sideways. <laughs> Hallelujah. But give. Hallelujah. Giving upward means you are giving not because the person is poor, but because the person is anointed or because the person is above you. Give in the direction you are going to. But also give down to the people who do not have. For he that lendeth to the poor, uh, who he that giveth to the poor, lendeth to the Lord. So give in every direction. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, yes, it's in the pouring and the breaking that it grows. So keep it flowing. Keep it running. Hallelujah. It's not God that will keep it running. No, it's you that will keep it running. Hallelujah. He gives seed to the sower. So you are the one that makes yourself a sower and he can put seed in your hand. Pastor F uh, Amy says, Jesus lifted the insufficiency to God and gave thanks. And the miracle occurred. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Man toro copolo brema hanta lady kisses de bala. If I missed your 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 comments, please just keep it flowing. Just comment again. I'll get back there. Jesus lifted insufficiency to God and he gave thanks. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. E books, you are the one that started this, or you are the one the Lord used. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, Mahanta Labaka Baradia. Hey, let's begin to give thanks to God. Let's just begin to thank him. This is a word for me. I don't know if it's for anybody else, but at least I know. This one I know. I know that I needed to hear this. I needed to hear this. Yep. The time that you are facing an exam and you've banged the test, that's not the time to stop reading. Keep on reading. Hallelujah. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a teaching of our bishop that as many of you that would like it, want to send it to you. It says, even in farming, keep on sowing. Even in farming, even though it's about marriage, it's something that really just resonates in my heart. So where we are right now, let's just praise God. His word has come forth. Fear has been removed from our hearts. In the midst of all the pressure around us, in the midst of all the hunger, we're going to keep on pouring. I heard a, 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 a leader in government saying, it's those who have that need to give to those who don't have. And we have to be careful. Because when the world defines poverty, they, there's a way they define, is it $1 a day? If you're earning less than $1 a day. But when we look at the word of God, it says if you have two quotes, you can give one out. So ask the Lord to help you right now. What do you have? The Bible says when they were building the temple, as we're lifting up the word of the Lord concerning courage complex. No, because they can have but this. Is courage complex going to be built? Yes, it will be. Because in the time when Moses led the children of Israel, they were slaves. And yet the Bible says that once the vision came down, they will go into their house and they will find the Lord's offering and they will bring it and the temple was built. So Father Lord, we thank you. God gives us seed to sow. Even that which you want to pour, the Lord will give to you right now. Wherever you are, you feel you do not have any hope. God wants to reveal the seed that you have. Just ask him and say, Lord, what do I have to pour? Like we heard, there's a wife who wants to, to pour out submission. There's a husband who needs to pour out love again. There's a child who needs to pour out honoring their 
their farm and their parents are mm. their citizens like us who need to pray for our leaders oh rebus and not to give up so many Christians have given up praying for their leaders of different parts of the world. No, it's it, let the Lord help us and restore us back to praying and giving thanks for them and seeing God move and focusing on what we can do. Father Lord, we have we have to pour. We lift it. Will you lift up that that the Lord has just put in your heart concerning that situation? There's He told Moses, "What do you have in your hand? A rod. Lift it up." And so, whatever the Lord has told you right now, this is the practical time. Just lift it up and say, "Father, I thank you." It might be a word. It might be a seed. Whatever it is, it's enough. That multiplying grace is available right now. Makando setele bahandaya. We want to testify. Rekando satire this year, believing God for volunteers. And the Lord said, what do you have? And we just did an outreach and God gave us an awesome volunteer. We're testifying today. God can do it in your life. That which you, the seed you need. For that harvest is in your hand. Just lift it up where you are. He's speaking to you. For a man is to go and visit someone tomorrow. For somebody else is to, is to plan to travel. Just that you're planning. There's somebody who was believing God for a car. And the Lord said, just plan where you will put the car in front of your house. And the man went, two of them received the same word. One went and drew the place where the car will be. And within a couple of months, God had moved. While the other one said, no, I'm waiting for the car. Father Lord, you are pulling us back to the right starting point. We receive grace. And Father Lord, we just thank you. Let your grace of multiplication, let the harvest come forth as we obey the witness of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Let's just thank God. Let's thank God for this word. It's a deliberate word. It's an accurate word. You know, there is, I keep, oh, we just keep heard in my heart, you know, you said when Daddy Oduemi said, how much will you need for courage complex? And you gave a word and you didn't give. You asked, you said this was what you needed and you wish you had asked for more. I feel the Lord saying ask for more now. And just give thanks Hallelujah. for the what what you think <coughs> is needed for courage complex the candle satire we stand in the gap right now and we receive it oh like i said alongside our bishop because we're all part of it like dickin dan shared with us this morning thank you for blessing us it's for the nations courage complex is for the nations we receive as is to receive i saw strategic positioning happening in the spirit oh just receive your strategic positioning if your if your heart is stirred up to give to the courage complex just receive your strategic positioning god will give in cash will give in kind because that complex is going up and we speak healing even right now for healing is the children's bread we break it do you need healing for your home do you need healing for your body receive that bread right now in the spirit and break it apply it to every member of your home even your neighbor as the lord puts it in your heart that person with a hearing problem it's it, it, you had an accident with the ear and it was bleeding something sharp went into it and your hair, hearing has been affected for five years now the healing grace of god is touching you makando setaya bahandaya there are angels everywhere ha. Ma, the holy ghost is moving they can the satire the bible says they minister to the hairs of salvation and i want you to know that even if the person is not born again if you can stand in the gap for healing for that person god causes his reign to fall on both the just and the unjust and we stand in the gap even for we, we've been hearing about the princess of Wales, we stand in the gap for healing upon her even right now in the name of Jesus. What is cancer? God knows exactly what to do. We pray your healing grace upon her. If there's anyone in your family that has a cancerous issue, receive the healing grace of God right now. We speak healing. It's a children's bread and God causes it to fall both on the just and the unjust. So don't start to think this person did that thing wrong. Just receive it. For that person we receive healing from cancer for anyone that is listening right now for their families in the name of jesus there's somebody that's having serious joint pain is you even finding it difficult to to crunch your hand together the, and there's a sharp pain going through this particular finger even when you tried they can there's a god put the bones the bible says he made sure the bones were not broken they can he knows every part of you will receive healing even right now where's someone said that but they say mine is a bone disease receive healing right now god is faithful just receive the bread that is being broken in jesus name hallelujah
You know, I'm so excited. I have this witness in my spirit. The Bible says, and the Lord went everywhere with them, confirming his word yes, Lord. with signs and I'm so absolutely sure. I know because it ministered to me as I yes, preached. Lord. I know for it, for a certainty that this was of the Lord. I, I, I would have shown you my I had it's nothing. Word. I had not prepared to share this, nothing. It's it books turned word. the key. It's the Holy Ghost word. turned the key through her. And I had to do that act of faith and just follow the flow of the Holy Spirit. So I am absolutely sure right now that the Lord is confirming his word Marabasha. with signs Marabasha. and wonders following in people's lives. Yes, Lord. In your life. In my life. In the mighty name Marabasha. of Jesus. But please don't miss it. Don't miss it. I was going through the comments now and everybody's like, this message is for me. This message is for me. And then I saw a message that didn't just fit. Because you can hear something like this and go back and say, yeah, I received my miracle. No, that's not what you go back to say. You go back to say, God, I'll keep giving. Marabasha. You go back to say, God, I'll keep forgiving. Marabasha. You go back to say, God, I'll keep sowing. Marabasha. I'll keep planting. Marabasha. I'll keep encouraging. Marabasha. I'm going to keep my side flowing. I'm going to keep that door. It's, it, it's, a, it's a word of encouragement, but it's also a word of rebuke to us. Because I know that a lot of us would have gotten to that point where we are saying, look God, I don't have any more. This little I have. Is that not what that woman said? This little I have is just enough for me to, to feed me and, and my I... children. So somebody is saying it's just enough for this. I don't even have enough for that. That's what you take home. Not a man, miracle. You know, you know. God is saying, keep it flowing and watch what I will do. Watch what I will do. I pray that we'll not be so blinded by the dollars we are looking for that we don't see the miracle that stands before us. The job we are looking for, the appointment we are looking for. God says, take your eye off it for just a little while and look at what you have in your hand. Yes, Lord. Look at what you have in your life. Value it. My Father, we give you praise. Let's just, honey, let's just pray right now. Father, Lord, we just thank you for that rebuke. Lord, we consecrate ourselves to our heart that we keep on pouring a heart that we keep on breaking in every circumstance we receive that heart lord more than the miracles that are going to happen as we pour forth that which you've put in our hands oh lord as we pour it forth that it will become a lifestyle yes, in lord. jesus name hallelujah it's time for us to come to the communion table Man, i'm I'm so passion. excited yeah pastor femi i totally agree with you Thank you, Dad, and more for the word. Thank you for using the children's segment <laughs> to stir this up. Don't mind Essa that is children's segment. It wasn't supposed to be. Wow. Come, come and say that into the mic. So, so you know it how much this is. It's just the Holy Ghost. It's just the Holy Ghost. Go on. This was not supposed to be the children's um, segment for today. Sorry. We were looking for um, the one we were to use. And... Um, I tried to reach there, De Louise, the one uh, I couldn't reach them. And um, I called Pastor Anna. She was like, there's one, five um, loaves and two fishes. I was like, okay, let's just send that one. So it's really God that work today. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Thank you so much. You just see how God was working and arranging this and bypassing everything. Not that I didn't prepare. <laughs> Glory be to God. Glory. God is so faithful. God it's is so a turning faithful. point word. Let's let's take the communion right now. Yes, sir. Get your bread, get your wine. Keep on for it. Man polo bromanahantale kede bidobo somaya. Thank you, Lord Jesus. La rodo borishis de mane kelebrona mahantala da baruna moho pelo regadilises. Oh Lord, thank you. So many more people connected today. Oh la bastubole genanate. The night that Jesus would be betrayed, he sat at meat on the Passover night with his disciples. He took the bread of the Passover wow. and he lifted it to heaven and he gave thanks. Yes, and then he said to his disciples, This, this bread of the Passover, this is my body which is broken for you do this as often as you celebrate it 
in remembrance of me. Today we take this bread, we lift it up to heaven and we receive it by revelation as the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. We thank you for your grace and deliverance. We do this now and we activate your remembrance. Everything you have won for us on the cross, we receive it. Yes, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody tell me the monitor that's loading and <laughs> not loading. Is, is the stream still on? If anybody is monitoring. In the same manner he took the wine. He lifted it up to heaven and he said this is the blood of the everlasting covenant. Do this as often as you do in remembrance of me. We thank you Lord. We do this in Jesus name. You may take the bread. Drop. Wow, Pastor Jemima Uke from Makadi is connected. Wow, what a joy to have you. What a joy. Books, Next thank you. Sister. Professor Obi is there. And Jedison is there. Oh my goodness. Hi, Jedison. Oh, wow, wow, it's wow. It's Outreach Sunday, so bring people to church. Especially Next for week Easter is Outreach Sunday. Bring people to church. Next week is go meeting out on Saturday. together. Go out on Saturday. Go bring tell people. somebody mm -hmm. the good news. And bring them to church. Esther, Ede, you are there. Great to That's see you, Pastor Esther. Glory be Hi, to Pastor. God. And Pastor Boma Otobo. We, we've got so many pastors okay. connected okay. today. Isn't that a joy? Hallelujah. I'm looking for Jed's comment right now to put it back on. And where did he escape to? Yes. Why don't you do that, Sita? Father, we just bless you. We give you praise. Do that after we give you praise. Lord, we thank you for your spirit that is moving, especially as people all over the world celebrate Palm Sunday, we remember how you came into Jerusalem. And we thank you, Lord, for you did all that so that we can be saved. You carry the cross so that we can be saved. And so we might make a call right now. Is there someone who wants to carry their cross as a Christian? You've been feeling in your heart that you need to give your life to Christ, but you've thought of the cross that you need to carry. The things that you have to let go of want you to know that whatever you need to let go of is nothing compared to the glory. Look at the way God has turned so many people's lives around through this salvation of Jesus Christ. So whatever cross you need to carry is nothing compared to where you are right now. As you've been feeling the talk of the Lord Jesus calling you to himself, just release yourself by saying this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I receive you. I receive as my Lord, as my Lord, and my personal Savior, as my Savior, I acknowledge, I acknowledge that you died for me, that you died for me, and you rose for me, and you rose for me, so that I can be whole, so I can be a new creation, so I can be a new creation, and I receive that newness. Receive that newness. Help me, help me to carry my cross, to carry my cross, and enjoy, and enjoy. your resurrection power. On a daily basis. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Honey, would you pray for me? Hallelujah. You know, I just looked at this. Joshua, this is specially for you. While she was praying that prayer, I wanted to do this. There is a word called empathy. There is a word called sympathy. And there is a word called compassion. Now, I just opened the scriptures to look at the word compassion all right and jesus had compassion 
and Jesus had compassion. We see it again and again and again and again in scripture. Empathy is the ability to feel what other people are feeling. Okay. So they say you are empathic. That means if, if Esther is feeling down, you can tell she's feeling down and you can sympathize. Maybe when somebody is crying, tears begin to flow through your own eyes as well. That's empathy. You can sense what other people are feeling. That's empathy. Empathy is a great thing. Sympathy is not necessarily to feel what others are feeling, but to recognize that others need help and to help them. But compassion is different. Compassion literally means, I'm reading it out, to suffer together. Wow. Isn't that amazing? I heard somebody say that. I didn't know that either. I heard it, you know, of all places on BBC 4. And it was on a secular meeting. And somebody said to, to suffer together, compassion. To suffer together, as in to come down to your position. Jesus had compassion. That's why he took upon Wow. The form of lowly flesh. Now, when I pray the sinner's prayer every Sunday with the people who are giving their life to Christ, it's not because I haven't given my life to Christ. It's because I have compassion. Compassion. Do you get it? Hmm? You got it? And I'm saying that because somebody else might be out there saying, ah, but this man just preached all this sermon now. And yet he's giving his life to Christ. <laughs> I gave my life to Christ first time 1979. Old man. <laughs> That's a long time ago. Okay? I rededicated myself, my life, I, you know, I rededicated myself to God 1986 and a half. Old man. And uh, since then, I have been having compassion. <laughs> so honey, we Hallelujah. will pray for them so Those precious father in the mighty name of Jesus for my brother my sister yes, Lord. who sh prayed this prayer today for the first time and opened their heart or maybe for the second third, the third. rededicating his life yes, Lord. I ask oh Lord that your will will be fulfilled Mara in Basha, their lives Mara I ask that you will be formed in them yes Lord that you will draw people from around to surround them with your love. That they will see you in everything. I pray, Lord, that as your word has said, that none of the children that you gave, that the Father gave to you, will fall. Amen. So will it be concerning them. Yes, Lord. That they will stand. Amen. And that your name will be glorified. Amen. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Amen. We bless them, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. We would love to receive you. We would love to be able to give you materials to help you grow. We would love to be able to wrap our arms of love around you. So please just type and say, this was for me. And we'll reach out to you. And we will be sure to find you wherever you are, in whatever city. Amen. Wow, what a blessing today. What Thank blessing. you for all of you who kept your... Um, comments coming in thank you rita yep we receive it and we are sending it right back to you as well hallelujah Amen. glory be to god glory be to god well it's time for us to give it's time for us to give our offerings and um oh my goodness i want to pray for our givers every person that is given every person the lord has put it in your heart today to give precious father in the mighty name of jesus we receive the fulfillment of your word will dest shouldest i'll tell you about that next week will dest shouldest <laughs> yes precious father i ask that you will bless them yes, that they will be blessed in the city and blessed in the field the work of their hand blessed the fruit of their body blessed and the devourer will have nothing on them yes, and we thank you we thank you lord press down shaking together and running over shall men bring unto their bosom yes, in the mighty name of jesus Hallelujah. i want to bless our tithers especially now lord cause them to be the first partaker yes, of the manifestations of your word 
for the Bible says, so mighty grew the word and it prevailed. We thank you, Lord, for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you all so much for being a part of this meeting. It's time for us to give. The Lord bless you and see you in two weeks' time. Hallelujah. Now I'm here to encourage you and to challenge you to release that which is in your hand that we may see the outpouring of that which is in God's hand. Every time that I cry, you hear Because God is faithful. And no matter the times that we'll find ourselves in, we have a reason to rejoice because our God delivers us from every affliction. Every time when I call for help, you're there for me. And because we trust him, we come to him with confidence. And it's a time to give. And you woke me up this morning. We give first of all because we honor the Lord, because he's our Lord. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, Supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. I am grateful. You've been so faithful. You've been so faithful to me. You have been faithful. Lord, I am grateful. Lord, I am grateful. Now we give unto God not out of compulsion some people think that at a time of pressure is a time when you hoard and you hold back it's a time to keep because you don't know what would happen but I challenge you when you dare to release your faith to give unto God you are giving God an opportunity to manifest when you died what can I say oh Lord shall not want it means he takes submission to his lordship to connect with his care you have been faithful Lord, I am grateful. Lord, I, am grateful. I want to encourage you right now to join us if you are persuaded to do so give right now and uh, as I speak uh, the number and the account details is being scrolled through your screen. Pick up your device. Oh, I know it's already with you. Make that transfer now and God will bless you in the name of Jesus. I just want to testify and I want to glorify I have been so tremendously blessed in this service. My life will never remain the same. I know the same is with you also, wherever you are watching us from. Now, before you go, don't forget, like our Facebook page, and every time you connect, go a step further to share that page to your friends and on your, on your own timeline. So you help us take this service further and help many more people to connect with us faster. Thank you so much. Till we'll see you next time. God bless you. He will always set apart his people. This is the time when distinction has to happen. The things that can be shaken have been made the word. Right.